an anisotrope. And anisoptera is a dragonfly. And a dragonfly has an eye which reflects and refracts light onto a central cone which picks up light and is able to allow the dragonfly to see. In much the same way, there's a property of scanning tissue which is called um, anisoptera, excuse me, um, <laughs> anisoptera. Anisoptera is the dragonfly. Um, I'm going to go over to this one. Anisotropy. And when it occurs, that electric signal, again, is coming down the transducer, going down to this reflective surface, and then reflecting off away from the transducer. But it's not making it to the transducer. So I want to give you an example here. Look at this um, cross-section of a patellar tendon. Now, on the left side of the screen, you see this sort of bright ovoid structure. It, and on the right so side of the screen, you see this dark ovoid structure. The only difference here is that on the left side of the screen, you've got a beam that is perfectly perpendicular to the structure of interest, and it bounces back to the transducer. On the right side of the screen, the signal comes down to the patellar tendon and bounces away. So the only difference between the one and the other is that the, the, is that the um, transducer was angled. And it doesn't take much. For a tendon, it probably takes 15 degrees of angulation before you start getting this anisotropic effect. So that patellar tendon, this is the same patellar tendon within a second of, of the other picture. The only difference is that the transducer is angled. So what that does is it does a couple things. One is it could make you think that the patellar tendon is pathologic, or you can actually utilize it to your advantage and actually differentiate the um, patellar tendon from other structures around it. So for instance, in this picture, you see that the patellar tendon is relatively isoechoic to, uh, to the surrounding structures, including the um, um, superficial tissue and the, and the deep uh, fat. But in this, in this picture, you see it's relatively dark, so you really get a good sense of where it is. And toggling the transducer, moving the transducer is part of what you're going to do to bring this effect in and out of your field of view so that you can really utilize it to your advantage. Tendon is more susceptible to, to anisotropy. Um, ligament is a little less susceptible. Um, nerve, because it has a heterogeneous makeup and is um, has uh, hypochoic structures next, next to hyperchoic structures is, is much less susceptible. So sometimes when you've got, there are instances in the body where you've got nerve which is immediately adjacent to tendon, where if all you do is to toggle the transducer about five degrees, you can differentiate whether there's a nerve or a tendon there because the tendon will become hypoechoic and the nerve will remain um, as it is because of this effect. And then muscle is, is um, not particularly susceptible.